Welcome back to the Manage to Win podcast. Today's episode is sponsored by Habitly.com. Do you have a bad habit you'd like to overcome? Check out Habitly.com. There's a lot of good ones there to learn. And you can learn it in small bite-sized chunks, five minutes long, or you can work on it for an hour or more. But check it out, Habitly.com, seven days free. It's an easy way to be the person you want to be. Today's episode is with Navid Alipur. He is the CEO of AI Med Global. Now they have two main companies, Cure Metrics and Cure Match. They are fighting cancer and heart disease, two of the most lethal killers across the globe. It's an interesting conversation. I think you'll benefit from it. Let's dive in. Naveed, really glad to have you on the show. You are doing some interesting things with AI, with your company's Cure Metrics, Cure Match. And I don't know where you want to start the conversation because it sounds like we could go into a lot of different areas. Where do you suggest? Uh, David, pleasure to be here with you. Thanks for having me. Uh, and, and yes, uh, we are using artificial intelligence uh, at our uh, two companies that I've uh, co-founded, Cure Metrics and Cure Match, to help prolong lives and save lives. On, on the Cure Met Metrics front, uh, we it's our women's health suiter products where we detect breast cancer uh, to the tune of 99% accuracy. Uh, and we also detect heart disease from the same mammogram. So it's a two for one. And I'm happy to talk about that because heart attacks are called the silent killer amongst women where 65% die on that first heart attack, completely asymptomatic. They never knew they had heart disease and then it's the last heart attack in the first one. Um, and then on Cure Match, it, we started that with a, one of the top oncologists in the world, a lady by the name of Dr. Rizal Kurzrock, for your listeners, that's K-U-R-Z-R-O-C-K. If you look her up, ton of content and videos on, on her. Um, and with Cure Match, what we developed, um, if a patient has cancer already, unfortunately, a man, woman, or child, so it's not just women's health on Cure Match, uh, if a doctor wants to recommend a three drug combination, there's literally over four and a half million combinations. So it's beyond human cognition to process that. What CureMatch does is based on that patient's specific molecular profile of their cancer, will match and recommend um, the the combination one, two, three that uh, have the highest efficacy, as they say, uh, as, a, yeah. as a decision support tool for the doctor. And does that go across all cancers? It is. It does. It's called pan, so. It's pan cancers. The the terminology okay. uh, that's used. So it's for all cancers. Um, both companies, and we have them under our AI Med Global umbrella, which is just our DBA name. If you go to AIMedGlobal.com, it drives Secure Metrics and Cure Match. We are a hundred percent digital health. Right. We don't have any hardware. We don't have uh, uh, any labs. We don't process the cancer biopsy ourselves. We don't want to do that, uh, but we're agnostic. We could take those what's called NGS reports, next generation sequencing reports from any lab, um, large or small. There's public ones like Gardent, which in your neck of the woods, uh, NASDAQ listed company. There's Foundation Medicine that wrote shows. There's others. Um, and, uh, and we process that then to produce our cure match report for the doctor. It's interesting. Yeah, my brother got leukemia when he was uh, about 49 and uh, went on interferon and it took about six months for his blood to get right. And then he had about, and he lost about 50 pounds. And uh, then he, it worked for about six months and then it stopped working. And his blood guy at Kaiser got him into a, um, a trial with Gleevec. And in a week, food tasted good again. Uh, on on interferon on the other stuff, it tastes like cardboard. So he gained all his weight back, got healthy, had five good years, but then it stopped working. And then um, his so, only option was a bone marrow transplant. So, which he did, but it didn't take. But he he was amazing. He he lived seven more years, and uh, you know was very active most of that time. The last month or so, he finally just. You know, it, it it finally penetrated his skull, and so they said sorry. Oh. And but he was he was awesome. But it sounds like well, you my, know your product might have helped. You know, people like in that situation to figure out what's the best dose. So. Yeah. So one, my condolences to you, David. And and sadly, this is not the first or the last time I've heard stories like this. Uh, cancer's touched my family as well. My 
My wife's a 20 year Hodgkin's lymphoma survivor, had, uh, you know, grandparents pass from cancer, as uh, many people, and, and statistically, one out of two men get cancer, one out of three. So, it, the, you know, it, for us, we're very mission driven in that, uh, and it's personal, right? Um, and then, yeah. so the fact, and, you know, the, the case you shared with your brother, um, so, you know, cancer is like, you know, the analogy I'll use is, let me take a step back. If you're trying to block traffic on a highway, um, if you block it, people will find off ramps and on ramps to go around it, right? So you want to block it as high as possible. Cancer is the same. You want to hit it as early as possible to block all the pathways um, at the same time, right? And so what's happening right now is they'll say, oh, well, you know, we, we know this pathway and we'll use this drug because it'll work. But then there's other pathways. If the cancer is a complex cancer, it has more variants. So the cancer will find a way around. So you'll stop it. You know, the food tastes good again. They gain the weight back, but then it spreads and finds other ways. So what Cure Match does is we're actually not to take anything away from, um, you know, cancers like Hodgkin's, like my wife had, which if you catch it early enough, it's a ver- prostate cancer, or breast cancer. We all know you catch it early. The odds of survival are very, very high, right? Of course, we know yeah. other cancers like pancreatic cancer, are very nasty and Unfortunately, by the time it's caught, it's pretty late, right? But um, if a cancer, even breast cancer, you still have you know women who are thirty seven years old that die of breast cancer, right? And and if it's a nasty cancer, um, like nasty, I meaning like there's a very complex, lots of variants. That's yeah. where we're the most useful because we can identify those variants and then the different combination therapies to try to block as many of the pathways as possible maybe to it's not going to cure the person um but it'll add more life it'll prolong life yeah yeah and also you brought up heart attacks and problems with people's hearts and so many of us you know really don't have any good data on that does it also identify the potential for um blood clots or um you know aneurysms that might happen on the brain or anything like that so uh, a very insightful path you're going on with that. Um, on the diagnostic front, with you know, we we literally have rocket scientists that used to work for NASA on our team, um, and and so we could apply our technology to any uh, image or any set of data to detect, predict, forecast, or recommend. Right, uh, using artificial intelligence. So if we had a data set, it it could be. Uh, fuselages of airplanes and we can detect, you know, micro fissures and cracks that uh, are not being detected, right? We could apply it to anything. Now we're healthcare focused. So yeah, hypothetically, we could uh, use it to detect clots or, you know, stroke risk or anywhere else. It's a data rich environment to train the machine learning algorithms. What we focused on or focus on right now um, with breast cancer specifically was it, it's not because it's the easiest, but it's actually the most difficult cancer to detect uh, via an image. Your lung, my lung are the same spot. Our rib cages are the same. It's easier. I'm not saying it's easy, but it's easier to apply machine learning applications to detect anomalies in a lung image, whereas breast tissue, even the left and right tissue on the same patient are not the same. Um, so that's where we said, let's be the best in the world at detecting breast cancer um, and then move on. Um, as we progress and mature and have the resources for, to then detect other diseases on other modalities, X-ray, MRI, ultrasound, and so forth. Yeah, that's interesting, too, because my wife recently went for her um, breast exam, and rather than do the mammogram, she did some other type of scan that was, that was heat-related or something. It was It was supposedly less invasive in some way or something. It, I mean, mammograms are not comfortable from what I hear, right? Uh, and there are other, um, you know, MRIs, very good, but it's ex- it's expensive. It costs more money, right? Um, ultrasound yeah. is used. Um, um, m- mammography, though, is still, um, you know, the most uh, the most used. Yeah, and so talk to me about how what what really drove you to go into this. Yeah. So on, on the cure, we started cure metrics first. Um, and you know, what we had uh, at the time, my, myself and my, uh, 
uh, business partner, Blaze Barlet, and, and dear friend, now we'd met and we were both investing in startups. This is, you know, 2010, 2011. And, um, and we were investing in early stage software companies here in San Diego, predominantly that had some uh, monthly recurring revenues, they say MRR, and where we thought we could be useful in putting our money to work and being good you know, stewards of our own capital there too. Um, and we ended up getting then out of the blue and, uh, you know, we got a lot of vendor spam in your info at email address, but we set up analytics ventures as our v- as our LLC to invest our own capital. Um, and we got this email from some scientists from UCSD, which you may or may not know is one of the epicenters, one of the birthplaces really of artificial intelligence. And they came to us, no business plan, no business model. Um, they just said, hey, we're these literally rocket scientists. We helped NASA in detecting space weather. Um, I had no idea what space weather was, by the way, and uh, at the time. <laughs> but it's it's uh, if you don't detect it to reposition our defense satellites or telecom satellites, it knocks them out. So it's a big deal. And NASA was only at a 65% accuracy at the time. And these guys got it to 99% accuracy, essentially. And so they reached out to us and said, look, that's great. Um, you know, we're in San Diego. It's a healthcare town. You know, both Blaze and I are very mission driven again because cancers touch our lives. He's had cancer. My wife has cancer. And, and for us, we said, look, how can we, how can we do something meaningful in the healthcare space here? And in, in the interest of time, that's where in these conversations, said, hey, can you detect breast cancer better than existing technologies? And they very confidently said, yeah, we can do that. And that was the genesis of Cure Metrics. We literally formed the company. Uh, put in the first money, uh, built the team, got the chair of radiology at the time, a wonderful man by the name of Dr. Bill Bradley to join us as our first chief medical officer. Um, he sadly passed away a couple of years ago from heart disease, um, but in, in the, he was a pivotal at the beginning of this company's history. And my father's a cardiologist, so like it's you know it's always been uh, uh, a fascinating space to me because it's you know with heart disease we're so reactive, right? Instead of being proactive. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And so that's where, uh, you know, we said, well, how can we, you know, we're seeing the calcification in the arteries of the breast tissue. Um, how can we score that and uh, make a product out of that to help get women that have heart disease to doctors faster? So that that was on Cure Metrics. With Cure Match, again, you know, talk about making lemonade out of lemons. So my partner got cancer. Um, and because of that, we met Dr. Kurz Rock at the Morris Cancer Center here in San Diego. And uh, but for him having cancer, this company would never exist. We would have never met her. And we met her, saw the incredible work she was doing uh, at Moore's Cancer Center, taking care of her patients and the research she was doing. Um, and we said, look, this is amazing that, you know, but you're one person. We, you know, we have you know to build something that's scalable. Um, and, and that was the genesis of starting Cure Match. Um, and, and so the rest is. History, as they say, but that, that's how we started the companies. So, so your technology is available to all doctors that are doing mammograms. Is that correct, or or similar processes? So, de- trying to detect breast cancer it, uh, on Cure Metrics because it's a diagnostic uh, per the FDA. Uh, you have to get FDA clearance before you can then legally sell it to radiologists, to imaging centers. So. It's, it, it is a product for the doctors, for the imaging centers, for the hospitals, um, you know, whether it's a huge uh, imaging center or it's a small practice, you know, two, three radiologists in, in Barstow, California. Right. Um, and, and so we have we got uh, one clearance, the first of its kind. And, you know, we have a few others that should hit soon. Um, so it's a product for the doctors. Um, of course, patients can uh, ask, are you using Cure Metrics technology or you know, if not, why not? Um, on Cure Match, uh, it's not a diagnostic. Um, it's decision support. It's a report we produce that then the doctor uses in with all the other information of the patient, the family history. Do they smoke? Are they obese? Everything else to determine the care. So um, it we sell it now, but right now it's out of pocket. So the patient either pays for it or the lab bakes it into their cost. Um, now the American Medical Association is an organization that gives us CPT codes. They um, we, we are talking to them. We're looking, working to get our CPT code. And, uh, hopefully the next time you and I talk, I, I can share with you that we have it. Yeah. That, that, I mean, that would be great. So what, what exactly though? So I, 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 if 
there is a woman who goes in and um, gets a mammogram to to use that test. And then um, what happens with the data where then you guys then take that data and can apply the AI and then give her some better information to make a decision? So there, there is increasingly, uh, you know, a push in the healthcare industry to go from a fee-for-service model uh, where a doctor gets paid to read a mammogram and it costs about the same whether you're in Sacramento or in San Diego, uh, it's a fee-for-service, to, to a value-based care model, right, where, um, you know, the it, there's a proactiveness. What's the result? There, you, know, you know, with Obamacare, for example, you know, if a patient gets admitted back to the hospital within 30 days, you know, that's they don't get paid, right? The hospital doesn't get paid. So there's more proactiveness to deliver more value to the patient and and also then reduce cost of the healthcare system. So we are trying to touch, get direct to the patient. Uh, and uh, but, but what's important to note is we are a software, we're a technology for the doctor. So we're not uh, practicing medicine, right? So even if I had a mammogram, we could run it very quickly and come back and say, you have cancer. But then we'd be practicing medicine. So that's uh, you need to have a license for that in the very state that the patient is in. Um, and, and so we're not in the business of practicing medicine. Um, but that said, um, you know, the second opinion business is growing and there are partners that um, we could then, you know, sell our technology to so that they could use it in delivering those call it second opinions and practicing medicine. OK. And so um, what you're saying is you can do all of this today, but you're still establishing your sales channel. Exactly. Um, yeah. Okay. And so in in the meantime, somebody would contact you guys to find out who they can work with. Yeah. If they wanted to get this second opinion, because usually you do want a second opinion. And then if you're wealthy enough, can afford the fee, then you would want to you would want to do that. Well, yeah, on the part that they pay out of pocket is on 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 the cure match side, right? If they already have cancer, and that's again, uh, pan cancer, so it's any cancer, not just breast cancer for you know man, woman, or child. In fact, yeah. I'll note, uh, uh, fortunately, you know there aren't as many children that get cancer. But uh, many years ago, we had a situation where uh, a child had cancer, and the parents couldn't afford our fee, which isn't high in the big scheme of things. It's fifteen hundred dollars, uh, but. Um, we decided to do it for free because they couldn't afford it. Um, and so from then on, we actually have given uh, our cure match report completely complimentary to any child that has cancer or for any child that has cancer. So that's, um, you know, where, um, you know, wh whether for the parents or the lab or the oncologist that's taking care of that child, um, we are complimentary for any child with cancer. Um, so the, until there's a CPT code for a reimbursement, though, it's either the patient is paying or the lab bakes it into their costs uh, or the concierge medicine practice bakes it into their costs. So um, Dr. Rick Landman, for example, who uh, was a former chief medical officer at Garden, one of the big public labs, um, you know, he's retired, but he has a concierge medicine practice um, for you know VIPs and famous people that want to pay him to help guide and navigate them or their loved ones through a cancer. And uh, again, to maintain their, uh, you know, anonymity, uh, not that we would ever share anything, we're all HIPAA compliant uh, in that regard, but uh, to have that extra layer, he pays us, you know, con we have concierge medicine practices that just pay us directly. Um, and, you know, who knows what they're charging the patient for the entire suite of services. I've heard of, you know, concierge medicine practices that charge $3,500 a year, and I've heard of ones that are $50,000 a year. Um, but yeah. so we, we're a small part of that, obviously, with at fifteen hundred. Yeah, but even um, you know, if you're if you don't have the the extra funds to do the full concierge medicine, then the fifteen hundred dollars. I mean, it sounds reasonable when you're dealing with this serious of a situation, and you really want something that goes across all the data. And I think it's awesome that you do the piece where the kids are free for now until you have those CPT codes. Because um, that's that's a stress point, not oh. only for the child who really doesn't understand what's going on, oh, but I mean, for the parents and yeah. all the relatives. I mean, I it, mean it almost chokes me up just thinking about it. It's it's no, like I mean, I've yeah, always said, take me, don't take my kid. You know, uh, please don't. 
you, you, just, I mean, it, you took the words out of my mouth. As, as a parent myself, uh, I, I think all parents would feel, have that same feeling. Um, and, and so we are very, again, a very mission-driven team, and we do want to make our social impact uh, um, how we can. And so we're, you know, we're not a big company that can donate a ton of money to nonprofits. Um, we do work with cancer advocacy groups, large and small, and we do uh, get five complimentary reports a month to them. So that's our donation, call it five reports, you know, 1500, uh, you know, put a value on on that if, if you want. Um, and one of the organizations we work with, I'll also, um, you know, we'll be happy to give them some uh, attention here, is called the Hunter 7 Foundation. So uh, I don't know if you've heard of them. It's an mm -hmm. organization for uh, those that are veterans and those that have served in our military services and have cancer. Um, and so, uh, you know, we, we have a good relationship with them to help cure match uh, veterans or current uh, folks that are serving that have cancer. Um, and so we we try to you know do you know make our social impact and and, and uh, just because we're a for profit business doesn't mean we can't uh, um, you know make our contributions and, and try to help where we can with uh, uh, folks that have cancer. I think that's huge for for our audience to to have a reminder that there's there's a place and and business leaders need to step up. And choose what you stand for, and and like one, one thing that you want to contribute to the battle against, like cancer, whether it's breast cancer or leukemia or whatever. I mean, I, I did leukemia walks with, with my brother, right? Type of thing. And um, I think a lot of companies, it it's it's really a value to the culture. Talk about what that's done for your company culture and your employees to kind of see that you guys are um, walking the walk. You know, living out the talk type of yeah. thing. Yeah. No, I mean, David, look, uh, anyone could leave a small company, uh, you know, for a larger company that might pay a little more. Um, and, um, and and so if anyone works at a startup, uh, of course, people have to get paid. Uh, but they're not, in many cases, especially in healthcare and in, in the world in, in that we touch, um, they're not doing it just for the money, right? And so if they wake up every day, um, knowing that the work they are doing is going to have a meaningful impact, even if we do things, you know, one day faster, we're going to impact someone's life. Um, and we're going to help someone, uh, you know, beat cancer or live longer, or, you know, by detecting or recommending the best treatments. And, and so that's where, um, it's helped us attract, uh, talent that we may not have been able to attract, um, and keep that talent. And, um, and I think everyone, you know, wakes up and you know, comes into the office or gets on their Zoom and, you know, we have a hybrid work environment in, in this uh, post-COVID day um, and, and knows that what they're doing matters. Um, so so I, I think it goes far. And in fact, it was one of our employees that said, hey, um, you know, I want to give a gift of a cure match report to a relative that has cancer and I'll pay for it. And we said, well, no, you don't need to do that. We'll do it complimentary. But it, it was actually this that led to we have a, a gift of cure match uh, where now people can buy a cure match report for a loved one. And we discount that. Uh, it's under fifteen hundred. Um, and in fact, um, I'll share there's a, a code. If you go to our website, um, it's and you put in cure match podcast. It's a promo code that you know it, it reduces and gives a discount to that cost. But we'll be doing a big campaign during the holidays. Give the gift of cure match. Um, and so that way. Um, and you know, anyone, your listeners or anyone could, could, um, you know, purchase this for a loved one that maybe can't afford, uh, the out of pocket expense right now for this. Yeah. Talk to me a little bit more about this because, so I think one of the things we have that's a challenge today in our society where we have so much messaging that it's all about you and you're not good enough unless you buy this product and, um, you know, or do this thing. And so we have people that really get caught up in thinking about themselves first or that they're a victim and it's everybody else's fault. And I love the approach you're taking because although we do need to think about ourselves to a certain extent and we do have some dreams, there needs to be a balance. And the studies I've done is that people are much more fulfilled in their work when they're serving a cause greater than themselves or they're serving their faith in, in a God. 
Absolutely. You know, type of thing. And um, I, I, I want to encourage you. I want you to talk more about it if you can, um, whether it's a story or otherwise. But I want to encourage our audience that, you know, whatever you're doing, whatever business you're in, if you can choose kind of one thing that you're going to link to that, that this is a cause greater than us and we want to help solve this or heal this, at least locally or in our community, um, the impact on your people uh, and those relationships is significant and it impacts them not only on the job, but also how then they live out personally. When they're when they're fulfilled in what they're doing, doing meaningful work, they're happier at home. They're calmer when there's challenges and there's stress and and they can work through it much better. So forgive me, I'm going on a little bit, but no, Navi, do you want to add to that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think you know, you're you're very eloquent in 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 how uh you know you really laid out you know kind of our company culture uh frankly in that um you know again we, we're all uh you know mission driven and and get up every day and whether it's the marketing person or the computer scientist or the clinician um or our cfo or myself like you know we're all uh working for this higher purpose of yes we're a for-profit uh making money is not a dirty uh, word right uh, no one's yeah, alerted yeah. to that but it doesn't yeah. mean that we can't do good and for you know if someone's not in healthcare someone's in you know works at hertz rent a car um then i mean they could then you know work at a donate their time to a nonprofit or uh get involved with a cause that is important to them uh to advocate for whether it's healthcare related or or environmental related it it's, gives them that higher purpose for us it's you know obviously very laser focused on cancer and heart disease, uh, which are the still the top two causes of mortality in the world. Um, and, so, and so for us, we, we really think of this uh, at a global level too. Um, cancer doesn't know borders and boundaries. Heart disease doesn't know borders and boundaries. And, yeah. and, and we don't either. We have partners um, you know, across the world um, and we have patients that find us. We had a patient from Poland uh, just two weeks ago that, uh, um, and we actually never had this happen um, where someone, they happen to have a relative in San Diego, they're in Poland, and someone literally rang our doorbell and and, and, and uh, came over to the office because they wanted to, you know, get cure match so quickly. And, um, and, and so that's where for us, we're like, wow, like we're, um, you know, I, I want to, you know, sp you know, speak about it from the mountaintop so everyone knows, but uh and I think we could do a better job at that, but at least what we're doing is getting the word out there. Um, and that, you know, if someone has cancer, they get on Google, they, they find us. Right. Um, but if someone doesn't know, they, they don't know what to ask. They don't know how to advocate for themselves with their pay for their doctors. And, and that's one thing I'll actually, uh, I'd, I'd like to emphasize here is whatever the health issue is, uh, of course, cancer, heart disease are the top you know, or, or very, very nasty and the top causes of mortality. But I encourage people to advocate for themselves and, and get a second opinion on a treatment before taking it, and maybe even a third opinion. Um, and I have all the respect for doctors, by the way. I, I uh, my, my father's a doctor, my retired now, but both my brothers, my wife's dad, her stepdad, her sister. Um, <laughs> so I, 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 a lot of respect for doctors. Uh, uh, but like any industry, there are good ones and less good ones, and then straight up bad ones, right? And and so uh, I would encourage everyone to to advocate for yourself and um, and um, you know get a second opinion, whether it's uh, um, for a cancer treatment or anything else. Yeah, and I love what you're saying, and I think what you're alluding to too is that um, what you're offering at Cure Metrics Cure Match is a piece of the puzzle. And there, there's a lot of different pieces. Part of it is one or two or three physicians' input. Part of it is looking at your diet. Part of it is looking at whatever else you've got going on. Maybe you're in a high-stress situation. But there's a lot of different pieces of the puzzle. And I'm really excited that you are offering something that appears to have really high value to two of the most lethal killers that we have across the globe. And... I just wish you every success. So where do people go, Naveed, if they want to learn more about what you're doing? 
Oh, well, th- thank you for the kind words, first of all, David, and, and uh, giving me a chance to talk to your audience here. Um, I'm very, we, I, myself, am very easy to find. Um, you go to AIMedGlobal.com. Uh, it drives secure metrics and cure match. You can go to their websites directly and contact us. There's contact information there, email, phone number. Um, and uh, of course, uh, you know, we're, you know, follow us on LinkedIn or, or Twitter and, um, and I'm on there as well. If anyone wants to connect and, uh, happy to talk to, uh, anyone, um, that, uh, wants to learn more. Great. Well, thanks so much for coming on the show. This has been really interesting. Thank you, David. My pleasure. Thanks for tuning in today. If you like the conversation with Navid, please subscribe, leave us a comment or a rating. We'd love to have you join the family. Don't forget Habitly, our sponsor, Habitly.com. You can really learn how to be the best you can be. Take your strengths, make them stronger. Take your weaknesses and address those so they don't hurt you. Pretty simple, habitly.com. And again, thanks for joining us. Stay tuned. We've got more great leaders with some amazing insights coming on the show. Bye for now.